Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of American Truck Simulator. Today we are currently in San Rafael, California and we do have a run that we want to get to. It's going to take us 45 minutes, uh, or I'm sorry, it's 45 miles away. It's going to take us about an hour to get there bobtailing. We're going to pick up a load of wine from one of the wineries and take it down to San Francisco. It's going to be a pretty quick run, but I figured it'd be kind of cool. Wine trailer, something I haven't hauled before, so I figured why not. So. Since the last time I've recorded, like I said, I have been playing this game quite a bit. And, um, I have upgraded my truck just a little bit. I went ahead and installed another mod. Only one more mod since last time. Which is the, uh, the, uh, Kenworth W900 accessory pack. Which adds a bunch more stuff to the W900. Uh, which is pretty cool. I got some new stacks, some straighter stacks, whoops, that's wrong gear, some straighter stacks and uh, a new like sun visor that isn't so much in the way I can still see, I can still see uh, traffic lights and stuff like that. Uh, some different light options, just it has a bunch of different stuff you can do. I didn't go crazy with it, I just kind of had a little, added a little extra things on there, so that's pretty cool, so a little bit more money to go into. I have ranked up to rank 20. Um, we currently have $168,000. We still only have one driver. Um, I would like to fix that and get some more drivers, but we're going to need to buy another truck. And uh, we're probably going to need to upgrade a garage. So, well, it looks like a red light up here. But yeah, so, oh god, wrong. Still getting used to the shifter. Haven't played for a couple days, so, sorry. Trying to get used to it again. It's quite different. Um... So yeah, some people were saying last time they were confused about my analogy of like the fake G27, you know, leather feel. Yeah, sure, it's real leather. But what I guess I could have said instead was small. It's just the difference between having a really small shifter like the stock G27 um, compared to the, uh, the bigger realistic feel of the actual SKRS shifter. Um, that's kind of what I was talking about. It's not so much that the G, the stock G27 shifter is bad. It's not at all. It's actually pretty good. Um, but for trucking, just having that really tiny ball that you were holding on to just really wasn't ideal. It wasn't, you know, what it was in real life. It just, you could, you knew it wasn't right. So it was just very, I don't know, improper. It just didn't feel right. So to actually get a real one that I guess, yeah, a better way to describe it is just bigger compared to the stock tiny one um but i mainly felt I, I mainly talked about the fake feel just because a little plastic piece on top was was not the greatest feeling thing out there the uh, little plastic uh like shift positions shifter positions on the top of the g27 by by factory it's just not very it's not pleasant it's a little plastic piece on the leather it's just it's not a very high quality shifter um and uh when that's the only thing that you're getting your feeling from shifting is holding on to that piece it just doesn't make it very realistic doesn't make it you know it, it kind of takes away from it so what i was trying to say is just having this better shifter for trucking is going to be a lot better compared to that little tiny fake feeling little ball um, but of course, when it comes down to racing and stuff like that, if I get back into doing anything like that, obviously I'm not going to be using the trucking shifter. I'm going to be using the stock G27 shifter because yeah, it's not bad. I just, when it comes down to trucking, I don't prefer it. Um, so yeah, we have 48,126 pounds of wine going from San Rafael to San Francisco. It's only 195 miles. Uh, so it should be a relatively quick run, but I'm a little bit behind schedule right now. Uh, to be 100% honest with videos, so these Euro truck, I'm Euro truck, wow. These American truck sim videos might be a little bit shorter than usual. I do apologize if that is the case. I am going to try to do what I normally do, but like I said, I am pretty far behind. You guys are actually waiting for this video to be released today um, as I'm recording it. So, like I said, I do apologize. Um, I had a really interesting day yesterday. Um, went to a... Uh, a uh, memorial service and uh, just got me thinking about a lot of things and just kind of trying to you know think about what's important in life 
and everything. Not to get philosophical or anything like that, but, um, you know, it just, I kind of just took the day, to be 100% honest with you. I kind of just took the day and just, you know, thought about what I wanted to do um, and thought about what was important. So it was good. It was worth it. It was definitely nice. Made me, uh, you know, miss family, stuff like that. But it was definitely an experience that I'm glad I went to because it really did uh, overall help me for the better instead of, you know, bring me down or anything. It's just that after, you know, you go through something like that, you don't really want to, like, sit there and make videos right away. You know, you kind of want to just reflect a little bit. It was a train. But, yeah, so um, it was nice. I'm glad I went. And I uh, just didn't get much done yesterday. Today, the heat is unbearable. It's 90 degrees outside. It's going to be 90 degrees tomorrow. It's making me remember again why I'm not looking forward to summer. Um, and, uh... Yeah, it's just, I, I need to hook up my air conditioner. I need to actually get a new air conditioner. My old air conditioner is leaking. Um, so I need to get a new one before the summer really hits, which is going to be soon. We don't have my, that much time left, to be 100% honest. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to get a new air conditioner, something quiet that hopefully I can run, because I know that... Typically, when summer comes around and I'm playing... What does it say? Something about volleyball? I didn't read that sign. It said goodbye something volleyball. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, typically, every summer when I'm playing games, I have to turn off my air conditioner, which means that it gets pretty hot in this room pretty quick. Um, and it's just... It's terrible. It's a nightmare. So I would like to find a... Um, I would like to find a, sh a air conditioner that I can use all the time. Something that's really quiet. The only problem I have with that is I don't live in a very big place. It's very, very compact. And any sort of noise um, is going to be heard. Especially with microphones like the ones that we are using. So, I don't know. I'm going to try to figure it out. There's one that I'm looking at currently that they claim is is I think it's like 150 decibels or something, which most people say 150 decibels is like two people having a conversation. Um, I don't know if that's going to be good enough or quiet enough. Uh, but I also had to do a little more research when I first... Oh, God, I just let the truck die because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> Took my foot off the clutch while I was in gear. Like, what? Um, so... Yeah, one of the things that I uh, need to look into is the BTU, which I know this is like super boring. Nobody wants to hear about BTU on on uh, <laughs> air conditioners, but um, they they matter. They actually do. You can actually get an air conditioner, which I didn't learn until after I bought that my my current one, because I have a portable air conditioner. Um, there is one that is supplied, like the, the, the whole thing, but that thing is expensive. Also, if I'm only in one room, do I need to cool down all the others? No, you don't. Um, so I bought a portable one to hook into the window, and I think the one I currently have is like 14,000 BTU, which is supposed to... Oh, fuck, we're not going to be able to stop for this yellow, but it's all right. Oops, that is the wrong button. Hitting the horn, trying to... Jesus. Okay. So, yeah, um, I'm looking at one that's a, a smaller BTU. I think, like, four, twelve to 14,000 BTU. I think it's something to, like, cool down a room the size of, like, 300 square foot or something, something like that. More than that. My room's only 150 square foot, the room that I record in. So, it's... That thing is overkill. And I think that's why it might it might be as noisy as it is. So maybe if I get one that's designed to be 150, it's going to be a little quieter. It's not going to run as loud. Hopefully I can get away with, with being able to run and record it. But it's just reminded me that summer's coming in with having this really hot day. And I'm really not looking forward to it. I'm not a big heat person. I don't like dealing with the heat. It's The, the heat is very exhausting to me. I get very tired easily when it's hot out. I don't know why. Just one of those things where the heat comes in, I'm just exhausted. I can deal with cold. And yeah, sure, I'll shiver and I'll shake and I'll do all that. That's fine. But, um, you know, I can deal with the cold. It's it's the heat that it's just is really annoying to have to deal with. So, um, 
but yeah, so summer's definitely starting. We're getting those days where it's getting hot. And uh, allergies, it's that worst time of the year. It's not really the worst time of the year. I really like this time of the year. The only thing is allergies this year have been terrible. And uh, I also saw something about the heat of this year, like how hot these months, like April and uh, March, April, May, all that stuff has, is, has been since the compared months of other years. And man, these months are hot compared to the last couple of years. So... I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Mm, we're going uphill here. We're leaving San Rafael. I haven't left San Rafael very often. The limit's 55, but we're having a little bit of trouble. If we get down below 1500, I'm gonna go to four high. Keep the truck going. We're probably gonna drop below 1500. Nope, okay. Okay, we're going to go to five high. And we'll go to six low. Kind of getting towards the top of the hill here, so it should be easy. Might be able to go to seven low. There we go. I really love this shifter. This thing is so nice. It has changed this game completely. Oh, man, I really like it. Okay, then we'll go eight high and put on cruise. Perfect. So, yeah, it's uh, th th yeah, it's it's just getting hot. The allergies are real bad this year. The heat is apparently worse than most years, which isn't good. So, you know, there's just a lot of things that it's just it, the environment. You know, going outside and it's just being super hot, and you got to go to a place with. Mm, I am braking. I'm all the way in the brakes. Jesus. Nope. Okay, where are we going to be? We're going to be too low? Jesus. Wow. I was not expecting the traffic to stop that much, and they did. They slammed on the brakes to get into this 40 zone. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to look at getting a new air conditioner, hopefully something that I can run while I record, which would be the best the absolute best if anybody has any suggestions i'm more than willing to to uh hear them also just briefly since we're you know in the middle of this trip uh i saw some people commenting about not being able you know why is there no shifter cam um i'm gonna leave that for when i do the quote unquote review which again i hate using that word review because i'm not going to give it any points or stars or anything like that i'm just going to talk about the things i like and dislike about it but i'm going to leave that for that just because on a normal euro truck oh, god euro truck why am i still on it's, we haven't played euro truck in months and i'm still saying it randomly today um but for american truck it just wouldn't i don't really have a good place to set up a camera to capture a good angle to be 100 percent honest that that's a big thing uh eat hole there we go Jesus, there needs to be lines painted on the ground at these tolls because I don't know who designed those tolls that thought, yeah, no, there's definitely not lines on the ground in real life. They just kind of let everybody go out and go, Aah. you get a bunch of California drivers out there, you don't give them lines, good God, you better run because people are dumb enough as they are without with lines. Give them no lines, no. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have a, I don't have a good place to get a camera. My desk is just not set up in that way to get a good camera shot. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. I'm gonna have to figure something special out. Um, so that's why I'm kind of waiting for until I do the sort of overview. I guess overview would be a good term to use instead of review. God, this truck really doesn't want to stop sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I'll do. I'll save it for that. You'll see it there, shifting in action and everything like that. But just for a normal American truck sim, it's just it just doesn't work. It just really doesn't work. So I'm gonna try to set something up for the video. Oh, by the oh shit! You know what I just re <laughs> you know what I just realized. Um, and this is terrible. But a long while back, like after I got the uh, W900 accessory pack, I painted my truck black. And I'm pretty sure some of you have noticed already, and I've probably already commented, why is your trunk black? Um, I don't know. 
to be honest. I kind of just changed it. It was a thing that I was just like, yeah, sure, let's paint the truck black. That seems like a pretty good thing to do. Uh, and then I just did it, and I didn't mind it, so I just left it. And it's been that way since then. So, I don't know. We'll probably end up going back, but right now, the truck's black. So, hope that doesn't bother people. Um, let me take a right on red here. San Francisco is going to be a little interesting. <laughs> Speaking of interesting. Oh, nope, that's... Okay. Alright, this is bad. Okay, we just stalled the truck on a hill. This is going to be great. Oh, there we go. Oh, God, that is such a pain in the ass to get the truck going. You gotta, like, do all types of crazy stuff with your feet to be able to hold the brake, hit the gas, let out the clutch. Oh, God. Really? Because the trailer's on an incline? God damn it. Okay, let's try it again. There we go. We're going to stay in four low here just to get up this hill. And we're going to start coasting through these stop signs because I'm sorry. If, if we're going to get stuck on every single one, we're not going to deal with it. Okay. Sorry, getting distracted by these roads. These are a little ridiculous. Oh, shit. Stop sign. This shifter is still a big thing to get used to. Ah. No. <laughs> Such a pain in the ass. There we go. Good God. I'm being reminded why I never come into San Francisco again. Good Lord. Terrible. Uh, but yeah, so I painted the truck black. Really don't know why. Just decided to do it. Um, seemed like something to do. And uh, I don't mind it right now, actually. I think it looks pretty good. So um, I'll probably paint it back to white eventually or maybe keep it a different color. I don't really know. But um, yeah. I just, that's, that's what's happening. I did it so long ago that I kind of forgot that it was a new change for you guys. There's some, you know, when you play a game and don't record it from a game that you record all the time, there's things that you forget. Okay, this visor is not helping me in San Francisco. Uh, there's things that you forget that you've changed on your truck and uh, haven't recorded since then, so... It can get a little confusing sometimes, and that was one of those things. I was sitting here looking at the hood and going, Oh yeah, that's right. It's black now. So, we're going to have to get over, and this is going red. And I'm hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes. Okay. God, San Francisco is not truck friendly at all. Or visor friendly. This visor that I have... <laughs> on flat roads works relatively okay. I had to go with the one that had the kind of the point in the middle. That way I could see the lights on the side, but in San Francisco, it just does not do you any good. Oh, going through buildings and everything. Um, but yeah, so black truck. Look on the outside randomly for no reason. Uh, as you can see, the, the pipes on it are like completely straight now, which is pretty cool. Um, I put the bull bar thing back on the front because a lot of you really liked it. So decided to put that back. Uh, the straight pipes I really like. Um, they're not the stock Kenworth ones, which is pretty cool. And uh, painted it black, put some different types of lighting on it, and that's pretty much about it. It hasn't really changed too much since like the color and the stacks have been the main thing and putting that bar back on the front have been like the main changes other than that yeah it's pretty much the same thing so we're getting close to our destination though so we're gonna drop off here uh which hopefully won't be the worst drop off ever and then uh what we'll do is we'll take a look just briefly about what uh 
what kinds of loads are leaving San Francisco, if we can get another short one to do another episode or not. We'll see. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of different things leaving San Francisco. Watch that trailer. Getting caught up on all the lights. Uh, but yeah, so... Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, I don't really have... There, there wasn't really much... There's not really much of anything else going on right now, currently. Um, I'm wanting... To, I'm really missing the Miata. I don't know why that's coming to my mind, but I saw it the other day, and I just looked at it and thought, Oh, man. I need to drive it. It hasn't been driven in a long time, unfortunately, because I've been going everywhere in the Vic, racking up the miles on the Vic. Um, which I'm okay with. I mean, I, I've put, you know, I've, I've, the, the Vic has, is pretty solid of a car. You know, it's reliable. Doesn't get into any issues. I say that now, but maybe because I said that something will happen. I hope not, knock on wood. Um, but, you know, it's reliable. It goes everywhere. The Miata, it just has that 20-something-year-old... Ooh, that was supposed to be a downshift to third. It has that 20-something-year-old kind of just... Not going to be able to repair some things with it. Like, just the noise. The noise in the cabin is its very squeaky. There's a lot of things going on. Another reason why I haven't driven it is the carpet. Uh, the carpet just got wrecked in... Um, where's the drop-off point? <laughs> I don't really want to pull in because I want to see where it where it's at. I think it's just in the back. Yeah, it's probably just in the back. Okay, I'm just gonna back it in because I'm not gonna. I don't want to risk pulling it in and then have to having to back it in later. So, but yeah, so the uh, the carpet in the Miata got wrecked after a rainstorm. When I first bought it, it had a a rip in the in the rear windshield of the soft top, and um, the day I bought it, it rained. <laughs> Which is just amazing. Uh, and then it had a hole in the window for a while. And, you know. And then this last rainstorm, I was getting some water in the trunk. The last big rainstorm we had, which was, um, I don't know, a while back. But it just, it, it caused the kind of the mildew that had built up in the car. It kind of caused it to come out. And the car now, when you get in it, it's just, it just does not, it's not a pleasant smell to be inside and deal with the, uh, the mildewy smell. If you've ever had a convertible or a car that's had water get into it somehow with a carpet that's sad, it's just that old smell. It's just not very pleasant. It's not nice to, to listen to or to, to smell. I'm just trying to figure out here, where the fuck is the drop-off points? Okay, hold on. Oh. Okay. We got to get it around the... All right. This is going to be... Uh, let's see about this. 